the new acrylic discs were cut to size but I had to enlarge the centre hole that worked out fine and then an acrylic sandwich was made with the elephant transparency in the middle some steel tube to make a collar for the replacement handle wheel that needed to be cut to length and then an end piece fitted to stop it from falling off and a handle added to the wheel remember the um, picture size adjuster shape adjuster that was originally stopped from moving too far by a screw uh, as we can see in this old photograph of the original machine the replica didn't have a screw and there were some problems there so I had to make a metal stop on the original there was a little winding handle here that you could turn to move the whole carcass up and down in relation to the lamp and lens so you could align the image depending on where it was on the disc you can see that arrangement here uh, but it's not there because on the replica it was put on the other side so that was because if it had been there the drive from the museum motor that was in there when it was on display at Mommy would have actually failed the drive wheel and uh, just finishing off with a little cap there there's the new disc completed from made from a transparency of an original disc with some Photoshop work to tidy it up a little. Audiences would first have seen slides of the actual photographs before then seeing the animated silhouettes. These paper discs we made for use with the zoetrope that appeared in the 1860s. There's a batch of them here in rather warm condition. That will give you the idea. They were made to be placed alongside the more conventional, more familiar zoetrope strips. Here's one I prepared earlier. So the disc went in the base like that and um, obviously it was spun. So this is another transparency I've had made. You can see that these are not perfect spheres because of the way that the zoopraxiscope distorts the image. We have the technology.
We can build one.